Well, happy Wednesday coming Community Church. Hope you're having a great week so far. This beautiful spring-like weather that we're having today. I know it's not going to last. We've got snow forecasted for the weekend, but hey, a guy can dream, can't he? And in the meantime, I want to remind you of a few things. First of all, um, don't forget, uh, we are in Christmas, believe it or not. And so on the 24th of uh, this month, Christmas Eve, we will still have our Christmas Eve service. Uh, so we invite you to come. We're going to be socially distant. We're going to you know, encourage folks wearing the masks and washing our hands and staying distant and all that kind of thing. If for some reason you're not able or not comfortable joining us, just like on Sunday morning, we are going to stream the service as well. Uh, so that should be a, a blessing to those. But that also means that we're going to be recording the service and you're going to be able to watch it on Christmas morning. So if you cannot join us because you've got family obligations or traditions, you can start a new one and sometime on Christmas Day, watch that service where we celebrate the birth of Christ. Don't forget also, we have prayer meeting today at two o'clock. We also have Adult Bible Fellowship every Sunday right after the service. I want to thank everyone again for their participation in the giving project. Um, I know it's made a difference in the lives of a couple families in our community, so we're grateful for that as well. With that out of the way, I wanted to talk a little bit about how this season, this Christmas, actually allows us to do what I think Christmas was intended to do, which was to provide rest. And I get that idea from Hebrews chapter 4. I'm going to read uh, for us, um, in particular, verses 8 to 11, but we'll talk a little bit more about some other passages there as well. So this is the Word of God from Hebrews chapter 4, verses 8 to 11. For if Joshua had given rest, or given them rest rather, God would not have spoken of another day later on. So then there remains a Sabbath rest for the people of God, for whoever has entered God's rest has also rested from his works as God did his let us therefore strive to enter that rest so that no one may fall by the same sort of disobedience. Let's pray. Gracious God, I thank you for today and this word. Um, again, I pray that you would illuminate my eyes and heart to see its meaning so that I may share it with others for your glory. Amen. Well, as we're taking a look at this text, it, it really kind of goes all the way back uh, into chapter 3, where uh, the author of Hebrews is saying that uh, Jesus um, is greater than Moses. Um, and uh, he quotes um, a, a passage from the Old Testament where the Spirit uh, is attributed as saying to people that they will not enter in to the rest that God um, had had promised. And the reason that they were not entering in was because of their sin, their evil, unbelieving heart, we see back in chapter 3, verse 12. Um, but the author of Hebrews wanted the church to encourage one another uh, so that they would not be hardened by the deceitfulness of sin, but instead would have confidence to hear from God and to not harden their hearts in rebellion. And he then asked the questions, who was it was that rebelled? Was it not everyone who came with Moses out of Egypt? All those people over the 40 years, was it not those who sinned and whose body fell in the wilderness because of their disobedience? And so the author of Hebrews says, listen, that promise of rest still stands. Even if you've not reached it yet, it still stands. And he's drawing this conclusion that the rest that God promised doesn't come from Joshua. It wasn't when the people entered the promised land that they suddenly gained rest because we know that they did not. No, the author of Hebrews is saying that in the person of Jesus Christ, we find rest. That is the Sabbath rest that he is talking about. And because Jesus came 
to take away the burden that we would have to try to earn our way back to God by paying the debt, by dying on the cross and, and taking our sin and shame upon himself so that we might confess our need and accept that free gift from him. Why, in all of that, he came to take away that burden and allow us to stand before God and to rest. Now, if you're like a lot of people, the Christmas season is anything but rest, right? The Christmas season is running from one thing to another to another. It's one store to the next. It's buying presents. It's wrapping. It's cooking. It's baking. It's all of these things. Well, this year it's a little different, isn't it? We probably aren't running from store to store. We might be going from website to website, right? You know, we're not going from party to party because those, a lot of those things aren't happening. It's as if God has said, listen, this day is about rest. That's my encouragement for you. Think of Christmas not as another long list of things to do. And there are things we have to do to celebrate. I get that. But instead, settle your hearts. Accept the gift of what he has done for you on the cross and in his resurrection and enter into his rest this Christmas season. Prepare him room. Enter into his rest and know that Christmas is all about Sabbath and rest. Well, I pray that you find rest and Sabbath this Christmas season. Uh, pray that for myself as well and that through all this we might all be able to have a long winter's nap as the, uh, the night before Christmas poem says. Well, I'll be praying for you. You pray for me. And I hope to see you at prayer meeting today and then on Sunday as well. Have a great rest of your week coming, Community Church. God bless.